uh, and welcome to Let's Talk About Self-Publishing. My name is Liz, and I would like to welcome you to the Fairfax County Public Library celebration of Indie Author Day today, November 13th, in the middle of National Novel Writing Month. For those of you who are writing your first, second, third novels, fourth novels, and have a great NaNoWriMo month. Uh, today, we welcome our guests, Vernon V. James and Shabnam Curtis. And we feel so fortunate to have them join us today to talk about writing and self-publishing. So to begin, uh, during this presentation, please make sure uh, that you mute yourselves, if you would. Um, and if you wouldn't mind turning your videos off until we do the Q&A, uh, our presenters have PowerPoints for you. And I think it will be um, uh, easier to read. And then we will have a Q&A after each of the presenters. You can ask questions to them uh, directly after their presentations, or you can place them in the chat and I'd be happy to read them for you. And so perhaps you're wondering what are indie authors and why do we celebrate Indie Author Day? An indie author is someone who self-publishes in order to reach as many readers as possible and grow a profitable author publishing business. So our annual author Indie Day Indie Author Day is a very special event for libraries and its readers because it allows us to meet and celebrate achievements of our local and indie writers. And today we have a wonderful panel uh, to share their experiences as writers and self-publishers. We have Vernon V. James. Um, v. James is a local self-published author of fantasy, science fiction, and comedy novels and short stories. The spinner of sly and clever fantasy including the comic sci-fi tale, The Little Ship of Horrors, and his most recent work, the YA novel, The Witch's Cookbook, as seen on his t-shirt. He <laughs> writes and edits multiple projects at once, con constantly moving forward to not only entertain his growing audience, but to hone his skills. He is a member of several writers' critique and feedback groups. 2021 will be his 10th year in a row participating in National Novel Writing Month this month. So welcome, V. And we also have Shabnam Curtis, the author of My Persian Paradox. Shabnam was born and raised in Tehran, experiencing the Iranian revolution of 1979 firsthand. In 2004, she immigrated to the United States where she now works as a project analyst by day and a passionate writer all other time. Shabnam teaches memoir writing workshops and has been performing lectures to colleges and universities about her book and the concept of sharing stories. And I hear also that she is uh, being certified as a life coach. So welcome Shabnam. So I'm going to turn the program uh, over to V and um, then when, when he's finished, we will uh, entertain questions. V, welcome. Okay. So can I get uh, confirmation that you're getting the full screen there? Yes. yes. Okay, just want to make sure. Well, welcome everyone. Very glad to have you today and happy Indie Author Day. Hooray for Indie Authors. So I feel like I'm patting myself on the back, but I know a lot of Indie Authors. And, uh, you know, they're imaginative, hardworking, very hardworking authors. A lot of them have, still have their full-time jobs and uh, they, they write like crazy when they're not doing their real world job. Today, uh, my slideshow is going to be uh, Adventures in Self-Publishing, How to Survive Wearing All the Hats. So I have asked an old friend to join me today, the one who taught me to love reading, and not my mom, although she was the first one to teach me how to love reading and stories. But the gentleman I'm inviting is Dr. Zeus. Now, I say Zeus, I've heard those other pronunciations, whatever, uh, I, was, I grew up calling him Dr. Zeus, so that's what I'm gonna call him. And one of his lesser known stories, The 500 Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins. So who is Bartholomew Cubbins? The young Cubbins is the hero in Dr. Zeus's Caldecott winning story, Bartholomew and the Ublek which by the way, he wrote in about 38. 
or had published it actually in 38, which really surprised me because I always thought he was a 60s guy, but that's just when I discovered him. I've asked Bartholomew, a real problem solver, to help us study what it means to be self-published. So what does it take to publish a book? You might break it down to three simple steps. You write the book, you publish the book, and you market the book. How hard could that be? But remember, as a self-published author, you wear all the hats. It's up to you to develop the premise, research and outline and prepare, write the prose, edit, revise, edit again and again, arrange the book cover if, you, if you're not the artist you know, yourself, uh, do the layout if you don't hire someone to do it, check everything and then check it again, and then finally upload the book onto the site and then the real work begins to market and promote, and usually while writing your next book. And I do want to emphasize that you should be writing your next book or two, even as you work like crazy to make this one a success. So why do you think that is? So take a look at the figures pulled from a survey of thousands of independently published authors in 2019. Authors earning between zero and $500 a year had an average of one to eight books. Authors earning 500 to 2,500 a year had an average of eight to 16 published books. Author, and these are independent published. Uh, authors earning between 2,500 and 10,000 averaged 17 to 25 books. And top selling authors, independent authors making 25,000 and up average 26 to 50 plus books. So don't sit on the one book unless it's a project you did for personal reasons. And if you did that, that's fine, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with writing a book to satisfy some need in your life. I believe writing is great therapy, but this is for people that were publishing in order to try to sell books. So what are the cons and pros of self-publishing? Well, the first con is it's hard. It's hard to wear all the hats. It's hard to do every single piece of this. And it's not only that, it's pretty hard to write a novel, especially in one month, by the way. So those of you who are doing NaNoWriMo, you're my tribe, good for you, keep going. So it is expensive to be self-published. Uh, you will probably spend hundreds or thousands of dollars in your career as a self-published author. Could be tens of thousands. I know people that spend thousands a month just on advertising thousands a month, uh, uh, every single month. You have a lot of competition. Uh, no matter how big you are, you're probably a small fish in a very big sea. So there are you know, millions and millions of books published uh, every year. You have to self-educate. I mean, you know, no, nobody's knocking on your door and saying, hey, I want to teach you how to write better. You got to go find that. Um, it takes a long time to become successful, generally speaking. Of course, lightning does strike, but for most of us, lightning doesn't strike us. You will experience self-doubt, believe me. No matter how uh, uh, confident you are, there are going to be times where you're going to wonder. So your friends and family may not be your great support or your greatest supporters. Your cat will demand attention, and real life will get in the way. But conversely speaking, what are the pros? Well, it's hard, but completing something hard feels good. It's expensive, but you're investing tax deductible money in yourself. You have a lot of competition, but no one is writing your unique story. You have to self-educate, but educating yourself helps you grow and improve. It takes a long time to become successful, but what else are you going to do? You will experience self-doubt, but overcoming self-doubt is awesome. Your friends and family may not be your great supporters, but your friends and family probably aren't your readers. <laughs> your cat will still demand attention. You will need to give your cat some love. And real life will get in the way, but you are expecting what? So, the ugly financial truth of self-publishing. The more aspects that you hire out to be done for you, the more the book is going to cost to produce. Here are some ranges to consider. Copy editing, $500 to $1,200. Developmental editing, $1,000 and up. Professional book covers, uh, $500 to $3,000. I know someone who spends more than $3,000 on every single book cover. 
But the artist she has to do it is one of the top New York book cover artists, and he's worth every dime. <laughs> uh, book formatting can be uh, 500, uh, but it can run as much as $1,000 to get someone to really format it, depending on, you may have artwork in your book or something like that. And audiobook narration, generally speaking, even if you do a royalty split with your uh, audiobook narrator or voice actor, uh, is still going to cost you $400 to $1,000, even more than that. And if you pay for the finished uh, per finished hour, it could be a couple thousand. And audiobook engineering, sometimes people have to pay for that separately, and that can run as much as $500. And the advertising, forget it. The, the spinning sky's the limit. Social media advertising, Goodreads, giveaways. Giveaways cost money, you know, I mean, it costs like $140 on Goodreads. It can cost a few thousand on uh, BookBub, you know. Uh, paid reviews, uh, I know that that used to be very much frowned upon, but it, they're a reality. You really need someone who's going to connect with Instagram and some of these other social media pl uh, uh, platforms and, and make a splash really in that world. And then there are promotion companies who will charge you a lot to promote your book around the world and, and that kind of thing. So it can be extremely expensive to be self-published. And think about it. How many copies will you have to sell to break even? You know, so, I mean, it takes a while and it takes a lot of work. And a lot of this uh, cost can be uh, sidestepped by doing it yourself. But then that's another hat you got to wear. Are you going to wear the hat of the copy editor, developmental editor, the book cover artist, the book formatter, and the audiobook narrator? Maybe. But Bartholomew and I promised to tell you how to survive and even thrive as a self-published author. So we're going to talk about how to do it and why to do it. Well, the obvious is to work hard. You're not going to just write a book, put it out there and be success. Um, like I said, unless purple lightning strikes. Don't give up. That's the basic tenet, of course, of anything you want to achieve and be successful at. Do not give up. Believe in yourself. That's part of not giving up, isn't it? Just uh, keep forging ahead, looking in that mirror and saying your little saying, like, I remember when I started saying to myself, I'm an author, you know, and I didn't, I wasn't going to deny myself that feeling and that uh, truth. Grow a thick skin. You are going to run into people who are not very nice and are going to say not very nice things. But what does that have to do with anything? You, you have a job to do. But be open to intelligent critique. This is very important. Critique groups can be horrible. They can be demeaning. They can be, you know, the worst. But they can also be the best. And so I want any one of you that are in a writer's group that's not working, quit. Walk away. Find another one. And keep doing that until you find your tribe, your group of people that speak to you in intelligent critique and then while they're doing that, question yourself and your own judgment and do some rewriting and revising based on the good critique that you're getting. And listen to the experts. Tune in to K.M. Weiland. Tune in, tune in to Joanna uh, Penn and all the other great podcasts and, and speakers, you know, that you, can, that you can listen to. Take notes, learn, try the techniques they talk about. Now, why would you want to put yourself through all this? Well, first of all, freedom of expression, right? Because why else would you write except to express what's in your heart and what's in your mind? Profit margin on sales. The average profits paid to an author in traditional publishing is about 7%. On every dollar, you're making a few cents. In most cases, the minimum I make on a sale is 30% and 70% in some formats. Self-satisfaction. When you work hard on something, you deserve the pride you feel. Bathe in it for a while and then get back to work. Freedom of innovation. I've written two fantasy comedy novels, a sci-fi fantasy comedy, a middle grade fairy tale, and a collection of horror stories. My next book will be a middle grade supernatural tale, and I'm writing a sequel to the middle grade fairy tale. So it's pretty obvious that I can write whatever I want to write. I'm also trying several new approaches, and I'm talking about marketing approaches here, including a gift box 
for The Witch's Cookbook, which was my uh, middle grade novel that I came out with uh, earlier this year. The box is called The Witch's Gift Box. And I feel like we should give one of these away, but I wanna show this to you. So this is The Witch's Gift Box. I hope you can see. I hope you have your, your vision there. Um, so this is a box, it's about, I don't know, 10, maybe 12 by 10 inches or something like that. I got it printed by a box company. It has all the illustrations done by the artist that I connected with to do this project. It comes with its own little Dazel pen. Dazel is the fairy. It has, it has a t-shirt and a book. And the book inside has sets of stickers, bookmarks, things like that. Now, the reason I show you this is not to sell you a witch's gift box. It's to say that everything you see here, everything that's listed on, on the screen there as what goes into this, I created, I, well, I didn't create the artwork, but I paid for every piece of this, everything, bookmarks, stickers, everything. And this is what you're going to need to do if you're a self-published author, you know, not necessarily do a gift box or whatever, but just remember that every step of the way, it's up to you to get it completed. So Elizabeth, I didn't know if you wanted to break in and do uh, uh, announce a winner or do that later or whatever you feel like, but I would hope that uh, we could draw for one of these gift boxes for one of our lovely participants, attendees. And um, that is, of course, my great appreciation to you for attending today. So I wish you all the luck and great success in your self-publishing journey. I hope, as Bartholomew did, you go home with all the gold. So I love talking to authors. I love communicating, emailing, you know, whatever, on, on all the different formats. And I'm a member of four writers groups. So I meet with writers monthly, sometimes bi-weekly. I don't I don't join any weekly groups. That's too much of a time constraint, a time commitment. Uh, but feel free to email me to visit my website. They're shown there on the bottom. And um, I appreciate everyone's uh, uh, participation. I'm going to stop share now and go back to the main room. So we would like to invite everybody to unmute yourselves and turn your videos on. And we uh, have a good 10 minutes uh, for questions. You can ask them directly to V, or if you'd like to put them in chat, I'd be happy to read them. Excellent. Well, I do hope you get out there and adventure as authors and try some new things. I'm looking forward to the books that you write. Well, I'll start the questioning off. Um, <laughs> yes. What is, oh, Teresa, uh, excuse me, Teresa, is that how you say your name? Right, right. thanks. Would you comment on the box gift idea exactly who the audience is? Is that the, what you're selling the book inside of that? Okay, box yeah, or? yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to be doing some of the uh, Christmas markets. That's my first test market. Uh, I did have it at the, um, oh, I, uh, now, of course, the name's going to slip me, but the, the street fair that was done down in, the, uh, down in uh, Alexandria uh, several, uh, a month or two ago, very well attended, actually, you know, surprisingly with uh, COVID and everything, but um, uh, I got to talk to a lot of um, uh, parents and kids, of course, you know, but, I, you know, I have a different a different way of talking to each one of them. So when I'm talking to parents, I'm explaining the book that it's for the seven to 11 year old, you know, chapter book reader who's kind of moving on into a, a little bit more difficult chapter book and that kind of thing. Uh, when I have kids in front of me, I ask them questions because that's the way that I feel like gets engaged. They get to speak. It's not just somebody talking to them, you know, or lecturing. So um, um, that, was a, is a great fun for me. And it's not the easiest thing maybe to talk to the public, but when you're excited about your subject, it gets really easy because you just say, it's a sweet fairy tale with a sweet fairy tale ending. <laughs> and how long did it take you to produce that box? 
with all the drawing uh, well let's see i'm sorry go ahead no just um it seems very complex you said you had the the t-shirt the bookmark the i mean there's a lot of things to that looks like a year's worth of work well yes uh so i wrote this book last november for NaNoWriMo i got it pretty much set to go by January. Um, I went through some final editings and that kind of thing. Um, I had the formatting company already set. Uh, the artwork, the amazing artwork uh, is just, uh, he had already gotten, I've been working, the whole time I was writing the book, he was working on the cover and the, the interior illustrations and that kind of thing. Um, so. Do you mind book, saying how you found your artist? I beg your pardon? Do you mind saying how you found your artist? Oh, this was excellent. Yeah. So there is a website, which unfortunately uh, slips my mind right now, where you can actually put up contests for artists around the world. I mean, you know, it's, you know, and um, so I described what I was looking for and about 25 artists sent me their sort of concepts, you know, and out of the 25, which are from every, every country you can think of, um, I finally kind of whittled it down to two or three, and then the one really just seemed to have the idea and the Disney-esque sort of look, you know, and I just thought this is the person, and it turns out they've been wonderful to work with, very young artists from South Africa, and uh, we just uh, have really bonded and, and had a great time, and he's actually probably going to do uh, some recovers of some earlier published uh, comedy novels, fantasy comedies. And so the amount of time from that concept in your artist drawings to your little box delivered to you. By right. Producer, right. How, manufacturer, how long did that take? Yeah. Oh, well, surprisingly, um, the boxes were printed in the U.S. and came in pretty quickly. My little fairy pen here, the little Dazel pen, um, uh, I thought when as soon as I realized it was coming from China, I thought I wouldn't get it until spring. And it got here in eight days. And I was just, I was amazed. Uh, great little company, really enjoyed them. It's called Wizard Pens. But they, there's nothing on their website that lets you know they're in China until you find out they're, chi they're shipping from Sichuan or somewhere, you know. But um, uh, it has taken the, the better part of the full year to put everything in place. Um, I find that Vistaprint may be a little bit, um, a little bit pricier, but very, very reliable. And the quality, generally speaking, is really good. But if, if there's a problem, they'll, they'll fix it very quickly. So. Thank you. It looks very clever. Congratulations. Excellent. It does look very, very beautiful and clever. We have a question from Sharon and a question from Dory in chat. So Sharon, I think you were first. And please ask your question. Hey, um, I'm, I apologize, I missed the very beginning of your talk, but, and you may have talked about this a little bit, but it sounds like um, you wearing a lot of different hats and taking a lot of risks with different genres and uh, you know, different things you wanna try. Have you ever thought about um, establishing different personas? <laughs> you know, for actually, you as <laughs> it's a very good question. And actually, I've come up with about 12 um, nom de plumes for all the different uh, things. You know, if I wrote romance, would I really say V. James? You know, would I really put it under the kids author thing? Uh, and a lot of uh, authors are very sensitive to that. Um, uh, I don't think that I ever will, uh, only because I kind of write what I want to write. And if I have to put a disclaimer in the front, warning parents and, and teachers that this isn't one of my kids' books, then I may have to do that. But I probably won't change the author name. Uh, it's hard enough to get recognized or known you know, you know, as an independent author. So changing the yeah. name, I don't know. It might, you know, I, I also, if I ever go looking for an agent, some representation or whatever, uh, that may be a case where a certain series of books gets put under a different name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess part of it is just not taking yourself too seriously, you know, and being proud of the fact that you're wearing so many hats and trying so many things. Right. Sorry, that's my dog squeaking her toy. <laughs> Um, we have a question. Thank you, uh, Sharon. We have a question from Dory. What is the name of your publishing company? And did you hire an accountant to do your financial matters? 
Oh, that's very good. Uh, so first of all, my um, publishing company is my own imprint. So the name of it is Rare Image Publications. And the artist did, did a beautiful non-Disney looking. Uh, um, I don't think you'll be able to see it too well uh, on the screen here, but um, uh, he did a beautiful logo for me and this kind of thing. Uh, as far as accounting, um, I would say that I have not felt I was at the point where I needed professional uh, help. But if sales ever rise past a certain point, I absolutely will. Great. Um, we have a question from Valerie. Hello. Um, oh, where's my video? Okay, there I am. Hi. Um, I have a question about um, which is the the best hat that you like to wear besides the writing piece, not the writing piece. Can't use that one. I can't use the writer piece. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, out of all uh, the hats that you wear. Maybe, maybe if I could just sneak in there storyteller, because I have to tell the story before I actually sit and write the prose. So maybe I'm cheating uh, on that. I, I would say though that the person to person, of course, we're all starved for this anyway by now, but the person to person, uh, events and things that I've been to where I was able to speak to parents and teachers and kids and and all that is is just thrilling and and to get some of the feedback like uh, for instance I have people sending me pictures of these beautiful little girls holding my book or having their pen on or whatever uh, I would never use any of that in advertising obviously but it, it warms my heart to see that you know and to know that I brought that kind of joy to people Okay, thank you. Do we have yeah. any other questions at the moment for V? Sharon has a question, or did you still have your hand? You do. Maybe asthma. Yeah. I have a new one. <laughs> yeah, new this one. time my question is, um, how do you balance your time? Because I can imagine that, um, you know, it's very different. You have to be in a very different place to be creating a story versus to be marketing or thinking about, you know, um, audiences or thinking about how, uh, well, and also you might be working on different things at the same time, so. Absolutely. Well, lucky enough, ever since I've, I was a kid, I've been reading multiple books at a time. So I will pick up the science fiction book, start on page 36, I'll remember the story and I'll keep right reading. I'll pick up another book and it's, you know, nonfiction, you know, I'll know where I was. So that kind of crazy, you know, multiple sort of thinking has led right into the way I write, which is I'm working on many projects at once. Um, and, and I think Elizabeth said something like that earlier, and that that is something that helps a lot. Um, I also have a full time job. So part of my brain, of course, is working on things that have nothing to do with uh, fairies and elves and, you know, whatever spaceships or whatever else that I happen to be writing about. Uh, so, yes, you. I would think anyone doing this really has to develop this sort of compartmentalizing. And uh, when it's time to focus on whichever subject it is, you focus hard on that, you know, and you get that done. Um, I hope that answers the question. So you're saying it's more self-discipline. It's not really a structure where you figured out a percentage of the pie, how to spend your time. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, I would say, yes, it's more focus and self-discipline, you know, that I know on Saturday morning, I'm going to be listening to podcasts from like Joanna Penn until about, say, you know, 8 or 8.30 when I sit down and I get to work on X project and I'm in the world of whatever that story is, you know, for a few hours or however long I've given myself. Sometimes it's a word count. Sometimes it's time. Excuse me. And then, um, you know, I then it's time to clean the kitchen or whatever. <laughs> and back to real life or writing yes. is real life, but another the other real life. Well, right. thank you so much. Thanks for all the great questions. And now we would like to turn the program over and we let me interrupt. We will provide I will provide information that V and Shabnam give us during this program and I can email everybody just so you know I'm collecting information so that you can get 
um, V referred to a podcast and if you want to know his imprint and he mentioned Vista print and all sorts of things. So I'll, I'll make sure that everybody gets that. But Thank now you. I'd like to turn it over to Shabnam. So um, we're, I'm going to turn my video and uh, audio off and let her take the reins and then we'll be back. Thank you so much. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, hello everyone. And thank you so much for being here. V, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of information and very creative. I really appreciate it. Uh, well, I'm Shabnam Curtis. Uh, I really thank uh, Lisbeth and um, the Fairfax County Library uh, for uh, putting this program together. And it's my honor to really share everything that I've learned through this process um, uh, that I've gone through. And um, I really agree that we said uh, it's really like a, a self-growth process because um, uh, we, we try to explore a lot of um, uh, what we have inside, of, or we want to call it like untested strengths. Um, and I want to congratulate every one of you to be here because um, I can start talking about it and going on and on and on, but um, creativity, uh, using your potential, and using towards sharing stories is actually what make, brings us closer together, what creates more empathy. Um, that was the main reason I started basically this process a few years ago. Um, and I, despite all the hardship that we was explaining very clearly, uh, I wouldn't change it for anything because it's, uh, it's been teaching me a lot about myself, about the world, a deeper connection with this world and with people in this world. Um, so I encourage every one of you and I congratulate you to be here and I encourage every one of you to just continue what you are doing because this world really needs it. Um, I have, um, I uh, obviously I don't have all the creativity that we had, but <laughs> so my slides are a little dry, I apologize, but uh, um, I have a lot of uh, a few information that I want to share. Um, I, I'm sure most of us are familiar uh, that you know, like traditional publishing, the, the different ways, different types of publishing is like traditional publishing when you actually go after an agent, and then when you find an agent, that the agent starts uh, kind of like uh, shopping around for different publishers. Um, and then, you know, some people get with the big five publishers, Penguin, Randall House, and, you know, those like big, big boys in the, uh, in the industry. There are some mid-level and some smaller ones. Um, I want to uh, make sure that in case if you wanted to go after that path, there are a lot of publishers now are um, emerging publishers that are a lot more ethical in the publishing industry because publishing industry is very brutal. And that's why I highly recommend that if you want to do it on your own, self-publishing or hybrid publishing is a lot uh, ethically cleaner, I think. But that's my personal opinion, of course. Uh, there are hybrid. There is hybrid publishing. Um, the one I know that is working very well is She Writes Press, and what it means is um, a lot of things that we need to do in order to self-publish a book. They take care of it. They take care of editing. They take care of uh, cover page. They take care of some little part of the marketing and also uh, publishing publishing process itself. Um, but then self-publishing is what we are talking about today. It's like, um, like we said, all different hats that we wear, it's all on us. Uh, so let's see what's the story here. Um, I think I jumped ahead of myself, but why self-publishing? Uh, another reason is because um, there is basically like about, you know, by the time you find an agent and the agent find a publisher and the publisher starts working on your book, it's more than two years. Um, but 
if you publish it yourself, then it's available to the readers right away. And there are ways, not easy, but there are ways that you can find readers. Um, as far as creativity that we were talking about, um, like you, if you, even if you hire someone for your uh, cover page, you still have the chance to say something about it. But if it's a publishing company, basically they pub they they send you a cover page and you don't have much saying on it. And also they they usually choose the title for you. Um, well, they have a lot of experience. They usually do a good job, but at the same time, it's your baby. You know, you want to have your own um, your own ideas on it. So that's another advantage from my personal standpoint. Um, uh, and then, um, yeah, and then actually like networking or gaining more readers, it's kind of like, um, in a way, very intimate, uh, but very heart to heart connection with, you, with your readers. It might not be like a, you know, Michelle Obama or Brene Brown's book with, you know, like millions of copies sold and uh, book launches that like thousands of people attend. But even if 20 people attend, then the 20 people, you feel that connection with them. It's very fulfilling. We did, we, we did talk about the costs. Um, I'm just going to go through the elements of cost that uh, you will face and you uh, want to be ready for it. Um, I want to say from 500 to 20,000, but I agree that it can be more, more than that. Um, but we have to be very careful, especially about marketing and advertisement. But the elements of cost are basically um, editing. Now, uh, sometimes you can minimize the editing because editing comes in different forms. The, there is line editing, there's a structural editing. Um, you can be in groups that you edit for each other. So when, we, when it becomes to the end to get ready for publishing, it's kind of like the minimum amount of editing and then self-proof self that you want to pay for it. The design, the interior design and formatting, um, if you're good with Excel, with, uh, with Microsoft Word, um, you could buy formats ready. Uh, it's, a, it's less than 100, but you have to be really good with Word, um, with Microsoft Word, um, not to make yourself stress out. Um, and the interior, that, that, that's basically the interior design. The illustrations, especially for people who are writing sci-fi, fantasy, you know, the illustration is very important and it costs some. Um, cover page, of course, as we talked about it comprehensively. Uh, proofread is important because, um, you know, when, when you get the, the book out, you don't want to have a lot of, or in fact, zero typos. Um, which is almost impossible, but at least like maybe 10 typos are okay. <laughs> um, nowadays, you can pay beta readers and they can send you, uh, some of them are actually really good. Um, they can send you uh, their comments um, and their opinions about the book and you can either accept it or not, but that's, that's a very good step that you can take towards a more uh, clean, uh, edited book. Um, and then the public publishing company fees, that's really not as much because it's like about, I think um, um, the one that I went with uh, in Ingram Spark, it's like about 60 bucks, I think one, one time fee. And of course, then every time you, um, you order books, you pay for the pop, pop printing the books. Um, there are some that are online only and they don't even have a fee. So that that's really not a big participation. Um, and then of course, printing the first batch, you want to have like maybe 20, 30, 40 copies yourself. Uh, so that, that will cost probably like about $5 per, per print, depends on what type of paper and what type of cover page you have um, that the, the uh, price varies. And then in case if you want to do audiobook, we had a very good information about it. 
and advertisement. Um, I'll talk about advertisement a little bit later, but advertisement can be tricky. And I just uh, want to ask you, please be very careful because there are many, many people out there that they come to you, they say, or, you know, websites, even, even like really good websites, they're like, oh, we can do, we can get thousands of readers for you, just come and pay us. It, you have to be very careful about what you choose. And I've done, I've done it, I've learned it in a hard way. Um, so in order to get ready for it, um, it's basically like all those elements that you have to make it ready. Editing is very important. It's worth it to hire someone, especially at the end, but even going through it. Interior design, clean interior design is important. Cover book, I know we all have heard that we don't buy uh, a book because of the cover, but people do. Um, a very nice, this nicely designed cover book is important. You know, like the the typology, the the the, the basically. I'm not a I'm not a designer, but um, basically, like all the different elements of measurement and the colors and um, the, the the character or the theme of the book on the cover page. It's it, these are all very very important. Um, illustrations, of course, they need to be ready. Um, you would like to have a Goodreads author page, uh, probably, I want to say nine months ahead of your publishing day. The only thing is when you, um, and I have a link here, and I'll make, I make sure I provide it. Um, when you try to have the author's uh, page, in Goodreads, the only thing they ask you is basically um, the, the title of the book and the uh, publishing date. Uh, those are important. And then you can just, um, and maybe like a picture that you can use, that you can change later. Um, but with that, you can just have the author page there and you, you can basically start talking about your book. You want to have a website, um, it's not necessary, but it helps a lot. But it can be even like if you are blogging, you know, it can be like a very simple website, but something that it talks about you, it talks about the events, it talks about the book, uh, something that you can represent for, uh, for events like, you know, people uh, to have your events listed and everything, but also for bookstores. Um, then you choose a company to publish your book. I chose Ingram, Ingram Spark first, and then I also went with uh, Amazon uh, KDP. So I have both of them. Um, and then um, you want to see like if you can, um, like there are magazines out there that um, if you send an excerpt of your book, depends on the genre, um, they usually like to um, publish the, the excerpt of the book. And that's another way of just, you know, putting your book out there. Um, then you want to make sure that you give enough time to your beta readers. Um, I want to say 30 days, but um, even more than that is good. And then when you send the manuscript to a beta reader and you ask to get it back for like within 30 days, then you give yourself another two weeks to look at the edits, look at the comments and feedback and work on it. That's, that's really important um, to give yourself enough time. So that would be, I wanna say three months or at least two months before the publishing date. Uh, Library of Congress serial number request. That's easy. That doesn't that doesn't take time. But you know, like just to get it out of the way, you can probably do it like a month before the publishing. Um, and then asking for blurbs. That's probably the most difficult part, at least personally for me, because if you have other friends, other author friends, that they can give it to you, it's good. I uh, have like a couple of them, but then I asked so many other people and I personally gave up, but you know, it didn't really hurt. Um, people do it, but um, if you have other author friends, that would be also great to just have their blurbs ha in your website, in your Amazon uh, link, and also in the book. 
Um, and then you want to talk, do you want to start to talk to talk to bookstores? Uh, probably like three months ahead. Um, like if we all live in the Washington DC metropolitan area, I wanna say po 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 politics and pros, um, they need a three months um, time before, the, before your publishing date if they want to consider your book. Uh, some other smaller stores, they might need a little less time, but it's good to, talk, to start talking to them ahead of the time for a book event, for even having your book uh, in their store. They have all different types of contracts that you can look at it. Um, libraries as well, I, I leave it to Lisbeth because um, it, um, it's usually like, um, you have to have the book published after you want to talk to the libraries. Um, but uh, overall, these are the steps that you want to get through, get ready. Um, and then these are the information that um, I think I'm going to I'm going to provide um, and Lisbeth would be um, kindly uh, provided to you. Um, these are the name of the uh, some of the companies or some of the uh, basically next few slides um, are the resources that I have used, but, you know, just just as a resource, um, you can just get a kind of like general idea about it. Um, overall, um, yeah, about editing, editing is, uh, like I mentioned, um, you really want to do the structural editing. If you work with different groups, that's uh, perfect. And, uh, and then line editing, you want to have another pair of eyes. And proofreading, I highly recommend don't do it yourself because you are too used to the book. Uh, as far as the cover page, um, we talked about it, you can use you can hire someone, um, you can use some of these websites, Amazon KDP offers um, cover books, but you know, they are not like the quality is a little bit like um, more generic, more, more generic, I want to say. Uh, we talked about illustrations. Um, I, uh, I'm just talking a little faster because I talked uh, too much and I'm uh, kind of out, out of time. Uh, these are the ones that I make sure I, I, I'll provide um, the different companies, uh, Amazon KDB, Ingram Spark, Smashwords, draft to digital And then uh, when, you, when you work with one of them, you can work with all of them, but one or two that you choose, um, make sure that the you, offer, you print the first copy. You personally look at it, the, at least the the paper copy um, and make sure that it all came good, uh, especially with Amazon KDP. They, it, it's even in the process. When you are doing it, they are like, this is like, this is the step that now you have to order your author copy to look at it. But it's, it's very important, it's very helpful. Um, as far as Goodreads author page, uh, I will provide the link. Um, it's a little tricky, you have to search for it, but or at least it was for me. Um, and I do say six months here, but I also feel like nine months would be even better. Um, and then through the author page, through the Goodreads author page, you can, you know, people can look at your book, people can, you can ask your beta readers to write, to start writing, reviews for your book, um, or even people who get copies before it's published, you know, so you can accumulate reviews, and then you can do um, your giveaways through Goodreads author page. Um, and also you can export all your uh, or import all your blogs um, to Goodreads page to your Goodreads page if it's related. Um, Website, I use the Wix.com. Uh, I'm using WordPress for my blogging. Uh, WordPress is a little bit more user-friendly for me, but both of them have a lot of great um, videos to teach you how to do it. And for a simple website, if you are good with self-education, you should be able to do it. Uh, so building it would be free. You just pay for the domain and for the services that you use. It's usually 
it can be even less than $300 per year. Um, as far as beta readers, um, yeah, I want to recommend that shoot for 20 to get five. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's hard to ask people to read the entire manuscript with the eyes of giving you feedback. Uh, don't get disappointed because, you know, we are all busy, but there are people who really enjoy it. There are people who like to do beta reading. There are even websites for it. I have not used any, but if you search for it, there are websites for beta readers. So you can, um, but you have to trust that you are giving your manuscript to them before you have the copyright and everything. Keep that in your mind. Um, with the bookstores, you can ask for events, like reading events. Um, you can even, you know, combine your book reading with another author. You know, you can suggest a panel. Book, bookstores are open to see what you suggest and then if it fits their, their style. Uh, they also, some of them offer consignment. So you pay some... Um, storage fee and then they carry your book and they usually is like well we give you like 40 percent or 55 percent of the sale it, it's sometimes it's really not uh bringing you any money uh or even if like you have to spend a few dollars on it but it's like the, that the other way to to get readers so that's another type of kind of like i want to say advertisement audiobook um I'm going to skip it because we talked about it. Um, and also, it's all in ACX, acx.com, and you get all the information. I will provide this. An advertisement. Um, these are the companies that you, when you drop the price of your ebook to 99 cents, you can advertise with these companies. Um, I will send them. And so you can get a lot of readers because they send it to really thousands of readers and a lot of people download it. A lot of people read it. And um, then that's another way to, um, to um, bring your Amazon sales a little bit higher. I mean, the number of sales and also hoping for getting the reviewers. Um, there are a lot of ups and downs, a lot of self-doubts, like we mentioned. Um, like I said, um, overall, publishing a book is not easy. Um, but uh, my, my only thing I want to say is, um, please make sure that don't allow the self-doubt stop you. Don't give up because what you are doing is really, really needed in this world. Um, th there, is, there is a big need of it and every story matters. Um, please don't give up. Uh, I know I don't have time, but I uh, chose this. Uh, I will send it to, to Elizabeth, but um, basically what it's saying is, um, you are supposed to write and write. Um, I also would love to talk to you uh, in any form, any question if I can ask, if um, you know, a chit chat or a conversation on book writing or anything. I would love to uh, just have a chat. Uh, feel free to talk to me, to contact me. And I wish everyone best of luck. And thank you so much for being here today. I apologize. I went over time. No, you're you're. It was perfect. Absolutely. Oh, Thank good. you so much. Um, we have a little bit of time still for questions for Shavnam. Does anybody uh, have questions? You can. Oh, V has questions, and you can unmute yourself and turn your videos on. V has a question. Go ahead, V. Oh. Shabnam, I was just wondering, and thank you for the talk. Very good. I was just wondering, where have you found the most success in marketing your book? That's a good question. Um, events. Events are very important. They are hard to get them, but usually when you have a book reading, um, those are the best ones, especially with libraries. Um, because like I see that, like when I talk about my book, when I read a piece of um, like a section, a little section, and then people have questions. And then the next day I see the sales go up. Um, yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Um, but, but at the same time, those, um, 
those companies I mentioned that like you just drop the ebook to 99 cents and you, but you have to pay like, I think it's like between 40 to $60 per day that you pay, but it, it helps the sales going up. Amazon ad, something that I forgot to mention actually, I have been using Amazon ad. Um, I'm still paying for it, but if um, you start playing with the targeting, the um, targeting uh, words, um, it's um, it starts working. It starts giving you sales. Um, there is also um, a person who Brandon or Brian. Um, I will send his name. He usually has a free. Uh, classes for Amazon ad and Facebook ad. I will send the name and his company's URL to you. Do we have any other questions from the audience? You answered one of my questions. How do you get the beta readers? Yeah, there are, uh, there are some websites, but um, you know, the, the, the writing community is also good. Mm -hmm. It's like also a trading, you know, like I've done it for my friends. My friends have done it for me. It's also kind of like, um, just came to my mind. I don't know if we, this is something we could actually like have a group at the library, you know, we beta could, readers. We could, we could even have a writing group here and it could be a virtual and um, at some point, Hopefully very, very soon we could be in person. And you both just inspired me. We need to do book launches and book readings for both of your, well, your books have launched, but we need to do book readings and launches for your new books. Thank and you. I think that would be just uh, wonderful. And for any of the writers that are here today, uh, we would love to do that for you. This is a place where books live and where people are hungry for your words. They are looking for writers and as readers and writers themselves. So we can make that happen for sure. Yeah. Are there any other questions? I have a question about the libraries and you said we can do it here, but the libraries are closed, I think for the public, right? Nope, the library, our libraries in Fairfax County are open for the public. You do have to wear masks when you're in the okay. library. But, oh, okay. And, yes, but we're open. For I live places. in Rockville, um, Maryland. Yes. And I think the libraries here are closed for the public. I believe so. So but, um, I can just travel there and I can have uh, some time with other authors because I published uh, some books. Yes. And I would like to share uh, share one of them. We would love to you. see you here. Please travel here. And also, here. I would like to uh, meet uh, our wonderful presenters today to First, meet them there. So uh, we can ch chat face to face is better. Yes, it is better face to face. Virtual. I'm a little shy of the, of the video, but I'm more talkative with the people in person. <laughs> Sorry about that. Nice meeting you and thank you so much for your presentations. Of course, nice to meet you too. And uh, if you were instead of like where I'm sitting here and would see your beautiful smile, you wouldn't be shy. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, I will, I will try. I agree. Well, uh, we're just almost at two o'clock. So if there are no more questions, um, we, I promise I will share information that V and Shabnam shared in the presentations. I will reach back out to them. They're always so generous with their time with us. They were here last year. And we want to wish you uh, all uh, happy writing. And if you're writing for NaNoWriMo Month, National Novel Writing Month, have a good half a month left of writing. Get those words out. And we'd like to see you in the library. So you can reach out to me. Uh, my information will come to you in an email when I share what Shabnam and V have shared here. And please reach out to me. I'm going to, I was telling Shabnam and V before everyone arrived that I want to start a writer's community here in Oakton and through the Fairfax County Public Library. We're one Fairfax. So this would be for anybody 
with, whether you're here or if you come virtually, if you're visiting us from another state, we want you here. So thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentations. And we look forward to seeing you here in the library. Please reach out to me and to us because we just love having our customers be part of our family. So thank you so much, V. Thank you so much, Shabnam. Have a thank great you. day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Love Was V going to do a drawing or something? I'm going to do a drawing and then I will uh, email who has won. I want to make it... Uh, an actual drawing. So I'm going to cut little pieces of paper up and we'll reach out and let, <laughs> let everybody know who's the winner. Thanks okay. to both of you, all of you. This was lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay, Bye. Have a great Take care. Day. Bye. Take care.